Where, where do you see the next like big opportunity for, for growth with, within Zoom Info? Obviously, you've been making very strategic acquisitions with Clickagy and Everstring recent, you know, recently. Where do you see that next phase of, of growth? Like how, how are you going to continue the growth that you've guys, I mean, with your recent you know, quarterly filing, I mean, it's, it's crazy how much uh, growth that you guys are having. Where, how do you see sustaining that moving forward? Yeah, so that that is that is the uh, multi billion dollar question. Right, um, it's one I think about all the time. Um, and really, what's what's super interesting about um, the way my job has changed is um, every year, every year that goes by with the growth that we're having, I'm looking out like further and further into the future. Right. Yeah, and if you asked me. Um, uh, and Nick is a good friend, uh, by the way. But if you asked me four years ago, or if you told me four years ago, I met a, let's say I met a CEO and the CEO told me like, hey, what do you spend? Mo-? I go, what do you spend most of your time on? They told me like, I'm really planning for two, three years in the future. Yeah. I would have been like, that guy's garbage. He doesn't do anything. Like he doesn't right. know how to execute. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sure it's fun to sit in your ivory tower and think right. about what three years of the future looks like while I'm like cranking execution. Right. Still every on day the phone. And, yeah, right. yeah. But today, you know, if you want to be a 30, 40% grower for years and years and years and years in the future, you really do have to be thinking about like two years from now, what is it that the market is going to want? Where's the puck going? Yep. Exactly. Where's the puck going? And I think what's super interesting, I just read this article. I've got this article right here. Actually, I was just reading. It's a Harvard Business Review article. It's called Automation to Boost Sales and Marketing. Yeah. And I was reading it today. Um, and let me read you, because it's super interesting. Let me read you like just two things from it. And then you can tell me, Jamie, I want you to guess when it was written. So, (laughs) (laughs) um, okay. Investments, Investments in marketing and sales automation systems hold tremendous potential for productivity improvements. The importance of marketing and sales services is growing. Hold on. Despite the worth of this proven technology, few companies have automated any part of their marketing and sales functions. Even fewer appear to understand the significant strategic benefits that can accrue from marketing and sales automations. What do the systems do? Here are examples of what the systems do. Sales productivity tools, plan, planning and reporting of sales calls, entering orders, order status, tracking leads, and managing accounts. Telemarketing, merging, cleaning, and maintaining calling lists, subsetting lists or markets, tracking and forwarding leads, ranking prospects, and prompting scripts, sales customer service and support. Sales and marketing management, providing automated sales management reports, designing and managing sales territories, analyzing marketing and sales programs by such criteria as market territory, product, customer type, price, and channel. These systems can automate the work of a single salesperson, a single marketing activity, or an entire marketing and sales operation. What year? 2012? 1989. <laughs> 1989. Oh, man. It's, it's insane, right? Like, that we have not wild. automated or digitized the way we go to market any real meaningful way right. in 30 years. We're having the exact same conversation. I mean, we're using different words. Like right. they call this MSP, uh, marketing and sales productivity. We don't call it that anymore, but right. we're talking about the exact same thing 31 years later, th- 32 years later, that which is, is really crazy, right? And it makes you realize how little we've actually invested behind getting the sales motion right and automated at companies. And so when I look forward, first I look backwards, right? Like what are the things that we're talking about 30 years ago that we're still talking about today? Right. And then how far along on that journey are we? And where are we going to be three years from now? And I still think that fundamentally all of that begins 
with a foundational investment in data that drives your systems of record, Absolutely. but turns those systems of record into systems of insight. And I think that's where we're missing today is we have these systems of record, but they don't really provide us any insight. And they're not really being adopted by our frontline sellers because they're just filled with a bunch of garbage. Yeah. Um, and so really, I think that's a foundational layer that's still going to be here. I think that when you... Um, Someone called it on a call with me. One of our enterprise customers the other day called it infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Data is infrastructure to the go-to-market technology yeah, like stack. That. That's right. It is infrastructure. Right. It is like what the core piece that you need in order to do everything else you want to do. You want to automate sales and marketing. You want to be in front of customers when they're going to buy your products and services.